Gold prices, they've been rebounding as central banks around the world print more money. Yeah, people fear fleeing into these uh, safer trades. Right now you're talking about gold up another $10 today, $965 an ounce. We've been following this trend and much more, and so has Jim Grant. He's the editor of Grant's Interest Rate Observer. And, Jim, it's great to have you here Thank today. Thank you, Nice to be here. Let's talk a little bit about those gold prices. Uh, is there a concern? Should there be more concern about uh, inflationary pressures out there based on all the printing of money that we've seen? Well, central banks um, are doing what they have uh, literally never done before. Uh, there's a very pretty phrase for this uh, policy, which is a quantitative easing, which almost sounds as if it were the uh, creation of some Nobel laureate. Um, mm. Quantitative easing is, is money printing on the wholesale level. And um, uh, not just the Federal Reserve, but uh, the Bank of England is at it. Uh, the Swiss National Bank of all banks is at it, or at least professes to be, not to mention the uh, Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, which actually led the way. Um, but um, uh, the Fed, for example, uh, to give you an idea of what is going on the Fed, for decades and decades, the Fed's balance sheet showed $20 billion of deposits by commercial banks. That's it. $20 billion. is like $20 billion in the Eisenhower administration, $20 billion in 2007, and now it is $830-odd billion dollars from 20 billion over like four or five decades to 830 something billion in one fell swoop, a one fell leap. Mm -hmm. um, and people say, well, so what? Uh, this is uh, tinder, but it is socking, is soaking wet tinder because of the skies opening and because of the debt crisis. You know, but no one does know when the sun shines again. And this wet tinder can become very well dry, in which case uh, we might see a whole lot of unscripted inflation. You think we're headed down the road that Zimbabwe has already taken? Uh, Please say no. That was, that was uh, a rhetorical flourish. Yeah, thing. okay. Uh, but certainly the, the, uh, the theory of money printing is not so far away uh, from uh, Gideon Gono, who is, by the way, who is the governor of the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. Um, so he and Ben Bernanke have not so much in common except a faith in the capacity of central banks through money creation. Mm -hmm. He's a uh, piece of work, that guy. What? <laughs> what, Gideon Gono? Yeah, cracks me up. So, Jim, yeah. would, you, would you support the bill that is in front of the House at the moment? It has 200 Whatever the bill is, no, I'm against it. <laughs> no, but, but listen to that because that supports what you are saying. It has 206 co-sponsors and it's in favor of auditing the Fed. Auditing, yes. You're in favor yes, of that. Yes, sunshine is good. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Fed should. The Fed is. The Fed actually is audited, uh, but it might be better audited. The Fed is this peculiar institution. It is a bank, uh, but uh, a most unusual bank. Um, and it, if if the Fed examiners were set upon the Fed's own documents, you know, unlabeled documents, to pass judgment on the Fed's capacity to survive the difficulties it faces in credit, it would shut this institution down. The Fed has like $45 billion of capital, $2.1 trillion of assets, uh, including the dogs and the cats of the credit difficulties. And the, you know, the, the, Fed is, the, the Fed is undercapitalized in the way that Citicorp is undercapitalized, at least before the magical transference of preferred to comment. That is over, right? Mm, we saw yeah, that? we did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, the bank looks so, so much you, better. You are actually um, Speaking about the dangers of misplaced hope, as you called it, in terms of protracting recession. Well, yeah, dangers of misplaced hope and, of course, mispriced assets. Um, you know, we, we are making progress in this slump. Uh, every day is, seems a little bit better than the preceding day, which is good. Um, but I guess we have to – I mean, there, there are natural curative processes in markets, right? Low prices are the cure for low prices. Uh, at low prices, people produce less and they buy more. Ergo, we're still not in the recession of 1991. We're still not in the Great Depression. So cycles are, to a degree, self-curing. And I think that uh, the self-curing is perhaps a more is, – is a greater benefit this time around than the exertions of our government. Jim, we've been kicking around the, the, the theoretical um, way that inflation is created through – printing money, yeah. and then the actual way that it happens, and that is where, you know, employment gets tight, pricing power comes back, things get, you know, the economy, get, we're not there, and well, no, it's hard to see how, you, right. it seems like a big, you got to connect a lot of dots to get the printing of the money to inflation in this period, how long does it take, well, the last, it take five the years? Well, the last great hope of the, bond, of the Treasury bond bulls is so-called output gap, and they observe that we can produce so much, and we are producing so little. And the gap between what we could produce and what we are producing measures the slack in the economy. 
And so great is this slack, they say, yeah. that it will be fiscal quarters years before there's anything like a murmur from the inflation front. Can we, can we soak up, can the, can the Fed sure. soak up the liquidity? So we could... Oh, the, can the Fed soak it up? It, it could. I mean, can we, can <laughs> we somehow avert well, this the, disaster that, that we're talking well, we're, about? No, with the, the perspective inflation. Yeah. Yes. But let me, let me speak to this in output gap first. That is not an especially good leading indicator of inflation. It hasn't been. Paul Casriel of Northern Trust has shown that it's not very reliable. Uh, and it's, it's a, it's, uh, tell us what's happening, what's happening right now. Right. right. Infl inflation is based on what people think is going to happen. But you well, have unemployment still rising. In, inflation, inflation also is, is based principally upon the rate of, of, of money printing. And um, you know, M M2 is growing 9% year over year, which is very different, by the way, than the Depression of 1929 and 33. What you didn't have then was M2 growing at, two, at 9%. But when you have an unemployment getting up towards 10 percent, can you get that sort of uh, wage price, price wage spiral, wage, well, you, spiral that comes in? You, you, to me, inflation is too much money. It's not yeah. too much money chasing too few goods. It's too much money. The, what the money chases is variable cycle to cycle. It can chase you know, skirts or toothpaste prices or oil. or oil. It can chase financial asset prices. It can, can chase uh, metals prices. Uh, so it seems to me that, uh, that, that too much money is what we have. Uh, just on um, inspection, and what that money is going to chase it remains to be seen. I think that there will, we will see higher conventional CPI inflation sooner than you expect based upon the apparently dawning odds against it uh, that the output gap suggests. I think that the output gap is going to be a red herring. Does so the Fed need to raise rates? If I were running the Fed, mm -hmm. you, yes. Yes. Um, uh, I think zero is the wrong rate for almost any economy. And the Fed, I think, is embarked with a zero interest rate project. It's embarked on a vast experiment in moral hazard. Um, and, you know, uh, the trouble with, with, with suppressed interest rates, with zero interest rates, is that they're like your interest rates are the traffic signals in a market economy. And everything's green. And uh, the junk bond market is up 30% year to date. Uh, the leverage loan market is up massively. All this, this credit stuff is coming roaring back, which is good because it, it indicates a healing of our financial system. But you have to wonder whether these interest rates are the right clearing rates or whether they are rather the imposition of the central bank. So I think that the rates are kind of too low. So if we imagine for a minute that you were running the Fed. In fact, yeah. I really like that idea of you running the Fed. <laughs> Actually, I'm uh, kind of busy. Around. But I don't know if, if we could convince you by the end of the show. But... Uh, what would you do with the bank's toxic assets? Um, it seems to me, uh, to quote an anonymous bond trader, there are no bad bonds, only bad prices. <laughs> mm -hmm. And toxic assets are a defined term. To me, tox you know, we ran a piece in grants uh, uh, last fall, and the headline was, uh, Toxic Treasuries, Super Safe Mortgages. And our line, which we still hew to, is that Treasuries were mispriced horrifically at 2% or so in the 10-year. That was a toxic asset, whereas mortgages at 50 cents in the dollar, some of these residential mortgage-backed security structures, were actually quite promising because they were value-laden, because they were cheap at the price given the risk. So I still think that treasuries are mispriced. So they, you know, that's to me is the is a toxic. There's to be sure there is residual toxicity in all of these, you know, these these screwy structures that Wall Street invented. Uh, but there is general mispricing, and of course a much a very huge asset class, namely government securities worldwide. So you could have really bad inflation, devastating inflation that hurts financial assets and hurts everything without a wage price spiral? If, you, if there was just so much money chasing well, skirts, yeah, chasing yeah, skirts, skirts or whatever, you don't yeah. need... So, I like, I heard that see, that makes me reevaluate re the whole wage price spiral. That, 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 was that just specific to the 70s and what happened? Or it doesn't have to happen well, there, that there, way? There, there are, there, Did it happen there, in Germany when they had the wheelbarrows full of cash? Was it a wage price spiral? Or no, just, there, was a, there was a central bank. In, I mean, was so a, we can do it without that. The currency that. collapse. So there are plenty of of instances of very weak economies generating very high inflation. Yeah. Um, Someone, know, looking that's south bad. Great. Someone yeah. <laughs> I know, that was my last hope. Someone we know did a Google search for the words inflation and deflation. And deflation uh, turned up 